These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Let's think about, say, this sample reaction. Now, uh, the name of this molecule, what's the name of this molecule? Oxygen. Of course, that's the name of the atom, but certain atoms have diatomic molecules, and oxygen is one of the atoms that has a diatomic molecule. So uh, this is also called the oxygen molecule. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what O3 is. Uh, that would be a logical name. Well, this is ozone, which is a substance that you might have heard of. Well, it's got that O in it sound from oxygen, perhaps. So this is showing how we can take ozone and make it into oxygen. Is this reaction balanced? Yeah. Yes, this reaction is balanced. Uh, this reaction makes sense how we can take two ozones and get three oxygens, because each, each side has six oxygen atoms. Now, this is what we would call an overall reaction. There's information missing from this, and the information that's missing is it doesn't say how the ozone turns into oxygen. It says that we're starting with ozone and we're producing oxygen, but it doesn't say how the oxygen is uh, the ozone is turning into oxygen. Now, this is something that you might not have even thought about all this time in the course. We've been working with these uh, these reactions over and over, and you might never have thought about the fact that all these reactions tell you the starting materials and the products, but they don't tell you how the starting materials are changed into the products. Um, it's almost like um, somebody says, well, um, here's uh, all the ingredients that you need to make a casserole. So they told you the starting material, it's the ingredients, and they've told you the product, which is the casserole, but that doesn't tell you how to turn the ingredients into the, into the final product. For that, you would need some kind of mechanism for doing that. So the way that the ozone turns into the oxygen is the mechanism, the way that that happens. Now, um, I guess some of you have taken organic chemistry. Uh, have you all taken some organic chemistry? Well, then you're already familiar somewhat with that idea of mechanisms. That's actually way more important in organic chemistry than in general chemistry. Uh, but in general, uh, this is the one chapter in general chemistry, I think, where we're going to focus on mechanisms as well. But you can see, just looking at this doesn't tell us how these ozones turn into oxygen. Now, one of the main things that chemists do is try to figure out the mechanism for uh, our reaction. And that's not very easy because, of course, I can draw these symbols on the board and you can look at them, but you can't actually see the individual molecules in the beaker or the test tube when you're doing an experiment. You can tell that you're getting more oxygen over time and less ozone, but you can't see how they're changing from one into another. Uh, although, actually, I think the textbook says that very recently um, the, uh, the microscope devices are getting so good that you actually can see what, what's going on. But that, that's, that's fairly recent. For the most part, in history, people had to guess what the mechanism was. And that's kind of what this section of the textbook is about. How can we guess what the mechanism is going to be? What would be a logical guess? Well, I think the most straightforward guess here is that you would guess that there's a bunch of ozones floating around, uh, I guess, in the air here. And every once in a while, two ozones bump into each other and form oxygen. So uh, a logical mechanism, so I would call this the overall reaction. And here's a proposed mechanism. Here's a proposed mechanism for how that could happen. Maybe every once in a while, two ozones bump into each other and exchange atoms and turn into oxygen. Now, notice that I've written down the same thing here as I wrote here, uh, but there, those are two different things. We were saying that we were going to uh, consider this as a proposed mechanism for this reaction. This might seem a little confusing because it seems like I've written the same thing twice, but they have two different meanings. Here I'm just saying that we're starting here and going to here, and here I'm saying that two ozones are actually bumping into each other and directly forming oxygen. Another way of putting it is, how many steps have I proposed in this mechanism? One. Just one step, which doesn't have to be the way it is, right? So I am adding new information with this. I'm saying the overall reaction happens in just one step, or at least I'm proposing that that maybe is the way it happens. I don't know whether that's true or not, I'm just proposing that. The textbook proposes another mechanism.
So here's another mechanism that was proposed by the textbook. I'm not saying this is the true mechanism. I'm just saying this is a plausible guess for how it might have happened. This seems more complicated than this one. How many steps are we proposing in this mechanism? Two. Two. So what's happening here is that instead of two <coughs> ozones bumping into each other, a single ozone splits up. Here, a single ozone is splitting up into two pieces. Uh, and notice that one of these pieces already is giving us part of the product that we want. Here's where we get the first oxygen. We're getting the first oxygen from this one ozone. That leaves a, that leaves a spare oxygen left over, and that spare oxygen combines with this to form these two. Basically, we're seeing how can we go from a group of three oxygens to a group of two? How can we go from a group of three oxygens to a group of two? Well, maybe these three oxygens just kick one oxygen out, and then they're a group of two. And then another group of three picks up a new oxygen, so it's an even number. And then that can split into two as well. So this is also a logical way that this might happen. All right, and now you want to um, start asking how can we tell which is the correct proposed mechanism or a plausible proposed mechanism. Well, one thing that has to be the case is that the pro proposed mechanism has to match the overall reaction. It has to really predict what happened in the overall reaction. That is, what should happen if I add these two steps together? What should I get? I should get the overall reaction. And if I don't, I know this can't be right. And that's one of the skills you're supposed to pick up in this section. So let's test that. Try doing that on paper. What would happen if we added these two together? Would we get the correct overall reaction? Okay, looks like you were on the right track. So now I'm going to write down all the starting materials. This is kind of like what we did for electrochemistry when we were adding together um, the half reactions. So what starting materials do we have? Well, we have a total of uh, two O3s on the left. And we have one oxygen gas atom on the left. And then what do we have on the right? Well, here's a O2. And here's another O2. So if I added all those together, three O2s on the right and an oxygen atom. What's my next step? Cancel, Cancel the oxygens. The best way to think about that, and again, we talked about this for electrochemistry, um, think about it like algebra. I can subtract an oxygen gas from the left. But that's only legal if I also subtract an oxygen gas from the right. Well, that's what the canceling really means. If I subtract an oxygen gas from both sides, the oxygen will be gone, and does this match the overall reaction we wanted? Yes. That doesn't prove that it's right, but at least it proves that it's possible. Okay. Um, that's one of the skills we have to go through, just adding together the steps to make sure that they match the overall reaction. After you've done some practice with this, you might not even have to write down this oxygen gas. You might just say to yourself, aha, uh -huh, I see an O gas here on the left, and I see an O gas here on the right. Uh, but if you make mistakes, you can write them down in separate steps.